All right, let's do it. God damn it. Lauren Boebert, uh, apparently, um, she's concerned. What's she concerned about? Welcome to Hell Sparks Mega Worldwide. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. If you're watching this later or you're watching a clip, uh, we do this all the time. And you, yeah, every day, three o'clock Pacific time in the afternoon, this stuff. And I do the whole clip all the way through because that's the kind of guy I am. And morning show, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday show, radio show. Anyways, so <clears throat> there, business done. Now, Lauren Boebert, soon to be divorced, Lauren Boebert, soon to be a grandmother, Lauren Boebert. Uh, yes, Lauren Boebert is divorcing her husband, um, who showed his dick to some teenagers, um, not for showing his dick to some teenagers. Interestingly enough, sh stuck with him after that. Something else is going on. Um, and the fact that her second son, second oldest son, uh, called 911 to report that they, he was fearful for his safety and his dad was possibly being abusive. And she picked up the phone and said, we don't need y'all. Um, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Lovely, uh, lovely folks. She, um, she's about to be a grandma, and it might be that he divorced her. He's divorcing her simply because I can't be married to a grandma. I'm, I'm a young man. I've got prospects. So, by the way, does anybody? I, I do that all the time. It's quiz time. Quiz time. Does anybody remember what movie that line is from? Can't stop lying. You're not allowed because you know. She's a statutory granny. Yeah, only on the merits. Uh, yes. Um, what does, yes. What does Mike Lindell say? Hold on one second. Mike Lindell says. Wow. Says, I know. It's totally. What? It's true. I know. She's going to be a grandmother. Wow. Yeah. Her 17-year-old son impregnated a 14-year-old. Wow. I know. Who's going to have a baby when she, right after she turns 15. Wow. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. Uh-huh. The whole thing. Lady Hawk, good job. Pukache, right there. Bam. Duh, bears. No, it's not the jerk. Lady Hawk, great movie. Also one of the uh, um, most unfortunately cryptically worded jokes. Such a good joke, but the, the period aspect of the language um, makes it, it, it wraps it up in too tight a package for the laugh to come through, which is, um, there's a scene where um, Matt, uh, uh, Matthew Broderick's character is escaping. He's a contortionist, and he can dislocate his shoulders and all kinds of stuff, and and apparently his pelvis, too. But he can fit through holes like this big. Um, uh, Philippe the Rat, they call him, because he can escape any place. And he gets out of the dungeon of Aquila. <clears throat> and uh, at one point, you see him pushing through, like his hand, and then his head comes through. And then he pops out, and he goes, not unlike escaping mother's womb. God, what a memory. And I love that fucking line so much. Not unlike escaping mother's womb. God, what a memory. <laughs> so, yes, Philippe the Mouse. Um, and his love for, for Lady Hawk, for um, Michelle Pfeiffer in that, you know, sometimes... You go to the movies, and hold on, I can't have Bobert on the screen, or, uh, or bowling on the screen when I say this. Sometimes you go to a movie, and the person you're meant to, you know, have sort of represent your focus in the film from a director standpoint or a narrative point of view is the, the knight, you know, who's seeking to, you know, best the challenge that he's up against. But in this particular one, I, I gotta say, and maybe it's because we... Uh, Broderick and I, let's just say favor. Um, and I do not look like Rutger Hauer, although that's never stopped me. I've never felt like representation was necessary. I always felt like, you know, that's why I could, it's great. It's nice. The nice thing is if you don't worry about, if you can't look like anybody, cause nobody on fucking screen is going to look like you, you can just take the best traits of everybody. It's awesome. Um, but, uh, Broderick's character and his love for, um, for the lady who becomes a hawk is just his unrequited love in that movie is uh, classic. Just saying. I, that that got me. That one worked. I uh, wonder if Carrie got the idea there for <laughs> from the hippo. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I know he's seen the fucking movie. I guarantee it. I'm, I wouldn't doubt if there's an outtake, CSL, of, uh, of her, of, of like him saying that line. Him quoting from Lady Hawk. All right, let's go. 
I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get to a show. Come on now. All right. This is uh, Lauren Boebert, um, and she's got a problem. She's got, she's got concerns, all, as always, as any new grandmother would have. But uh, this one is, she's worried about you and I. You, you. I'm talking, of course, to the Democrats in my audience um, and uh, the good people that they are, and uh, and of course not to the. Uh, the right wing trolls that are out there, or in in many ways, the faux aggressive trolls. Which I mean, is there really a difference? <laughs> um, she's not really talking. About, she's worried about us. She's worried that you and I aren't convinced that the uh, that the debt ceiling bill is a good idea. So she decided to go on Eric Bowling and complain about it to reassure us that if Lauren Boebert hates it. It's a good thing. So here we go. Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, she sits on the... Not for long. Jesus Christ. You couldn't find redder lipstick? Holy shit. This looked like a, a, a cherry 7-up ad. Fiscally conservative House Freedom Caucus. The uh, no. The Freedom Caucus is, not, is by no means fiscally conservative. They are religious conservatives, largely. They're not fiscally conservative. Get the fuck out of here. Wanting to suffocate someone doesn't make you pro-air. We got to save that air. I mean, you can't just let this person gobble up all the air. Very important House Freedom Caucus, uh, Congresswoman. Thank you for joining us. No, not really. She's not. She's not, uh, she's not a really important one. That's why she's free to be on the show. So what are your thoughts? I mean, I think the House Freedom Caucus seems to be against this deal. I <laughs> you think? Is there going to be... Uh, a rules committee uh, vote to, to, to have a full vote tomorrow, tonight, and what happens then, do you think? Um, yes, well, um, I can certainly tell you that the 20 who stood strong in the beginning of the Congress are still remaining strong throughout this next fight that we are currently engaged in. Yes, the, the you know the folks that embarrass the fuck out of our own party? Yeah, we're committed to embarrassing the fucking country as well. Um, by uh, doing exactly to the United States and its credit and its uh, e economy, what we tried to do to, um, you know, to Kevin McCarthy early on. So it's a goal, you know. And as um, Sarah Palin 2.0 beta, um, the, the, you know, the, <laughs> the third generation audio cassette copy of Sarah Palin, um, I, I feel like this is my direction in life. Uh, you know, we, we put forward the Limit, Save, Grow Act and... Limit, Save, Grow, LS, LSG. You couldn't make it the Limit, Save, Develop Act? Um, or the Economic Savings and Growth Act, the ESG Act, just to fuck with the ESG people. We increased the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion, not something that any of us wanted to do. None of us have ever voted for a debt ceiling increase before. But, but you're willing to do it now? In exchange for pretending that you have the Senate? It actually, it lowered spending for the taxpayers by $4.8 trillion. And this... <laughs> Yeah, for the taxpayers. You know, it lowers it for the taxpayers. Obviously, I'm not talking about Donald Trump, but... The deal that we're seeing now uh, doesn't line up to what we passed just a few... No, it won't. ...weeks ago. Uh, the House did our job. We passed a bill. We debated it. We amended it. And we passed this legislation. The Senate sat idly by. Joe Biden sat idly by for 97 days. And suddenly, now... Yeah, you don't have the votes in the Senate to pass it, and the president doesn't have to fucking sign it. He's not sitting idly by. He's not going to sign your fucking ridiculous document. You don't get to wrestle uh, a like a, a margin this big and call it a mandate and then and bully the Senate and the president into giving you what you want and wrecking the fucking economy or or pretending like you have administrative powers as well as being one branch of the legislature. We have to do more work here in the House because... Yes, yes, you do. I would I would start with reading. That's, I know it's a crazy notion. Speaker <laughs> McCarthy tried to do the Senate's job and Joe Biden's job for them. But N no, no, no. The, the Senate's job and Joe Biden's job is not to give a bunch of assholes their wish list. Don't believe me? Ask the squad. The deal just ain't...
Ouch. Right yet. Uh, so now we do have rules meeting. I was in the rules committee earlier today debating amendments, um, fighting for an open rule process so we could have amendments on the House floor. No, waste of fucking time. And try once again to make this legislation better. The rule uh, yeah, so notice how she said tried. And failed. This committee will meet again tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. They have had a lot on their plate, and I'm so proud of the members who are there that are fighting um, to put an end to this legislation or at least improve it. Uh, put an end to this legislation. Just, just uh, we don't want it. We're not gonna. We're gonna. We don't like. We don't like anything that re involves the recognized compromise of democracy. That's the problem. It, the, the fucking proto feudalists and the the neo feudalists and the proto monarchists these assholes just they don't get how anything fucking works. Oh yeah, and they're they're also TYT is pissed. Yeah, that's because that's their job. They have to they have to pretend. And by the way, they aren't. It, Chank uh, probably behind the scenes is is going well. He got to pass something. You can't just let the fucking thing down. But then he gets on the. This is bullshit. Democrats are monsters. Whatever. You know, whatever the fuck he says. Who cares? We want to see more than 1.4 billion dollars uh, rescinded from the IRS. We want to see the full 80 billion dollars. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Gone because. No, because of that's a budget that was passed through the House and the Senate, and the president signed it. You don't get to just clap back shit because you squeezed this much out of but like because you won by a george santos margin you done really what that means at the end of 10 years is the irs just will hire 85,000 so, so irs if, if agents may, rather than the 87,000 they promised congressman if i may so you guys put you may not together a package that was one and a half trillion dollars in the house it passes how did mccarthy somehow go he he worked against your own deal his own his own caucus didn't he N no, that bill won't pass the Senate, stupid. They have to actually present a bill that will pass the Senate and then get signed. I, I don't even know why this is confusing. You know, it's never good to negotiate against yourself. Uh, I think. Remember that in divorce court. We all should have held the line saying that we have already done our job. We passed a bill. It was a good bill for what we had been given. It was a fiscal. Yeah, except uh, you, you you couldn't get through the Senate or get the president to sign it. It was good otherwise. Other, I mean, it was good for a, a fifth of the government. No, sorry. I take that back. A sixth of the responsible government. Responsible bill. And the Senate should have done their job and taken up that bill. and amend No, they, they did their job. They went... What a bunch of bullshit. That was their job. That was, the, that, that was them doing their job. That's, that's the best you're going to get for that kind of garbage. It's, it was an inserious piece of work put forward by inserious people that was put to the, a vote by McCarthy because you assholes had a gun to his head legislatively and can threaten him with a, with a single member calling to vacate his fucking seat. Okay, yeah, sure, we'll have a vote on the bill that can't fucking pass or get signed. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you're... you're Winning, hashtag winning. It if necessary, and sent it back to the House uh, for final passage. Yeah, they did. They, they, they chewed it up and passed it themselves. That did not happen. And now currently there is a GOP conference uh, taking place that I stepped out of. I want to get back to that conference. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're an invaluable member of the negotiations. I'm, I'm sure everyone is waiting to hear you uh, find another note to say the word no on. No, no. No. So I could have this debate with my colleagues. But um, currently, there is praise and support for this horrible bill that does not have um, a, an actual debt ceiling number attached to it. Nope, then it won't. It's an unlimited yeah, yeah. debt yeah, ceiling you know, you know increase. And so we're it. seeing some you, estimates you, from $4 trillion to $6 trillion. Could be, could be it's unlimited. Democrats, uh, Joe it's Biden, just, it's a time. They're, it's not a they're, well, uh, the, there is a limitation on it. This 4 to $6 trillion idea. And um, this, this is the part where they're lying the most. There is a limitation on it based on bills that are appropriated and funds that are appropriated by Congress. So it's uh, considering these, you know, tw whatever, 12 appropriations bills are going to do instead of an omnibus. Um, that makes them have to do the fucking homework 
and cut funds and negotiate each one of those things, which means they're all going to be in fucking Washington nonstop till the end of their term. Get used to fucking staying there. Say bye-bye to everybody at home, asshole, because instead of passing an omnibus and just doing continuing resolutions on stuff that's basically the same with a, a mild increase because of, uh, in, you know, inflation or, or an extra cost due to, you know, it, or actually even a lowering of costs because of advances in technology or what have you, instead of just being able to go, yes, okay, move it out of committee, floor vote, we're done. Um, you guys are going to go hash every fucking page unnecessarily, do work that need not be done because it's a pissing contest. And in every one of those bills, you will be able to, you will, you will have in your mind, these will all stack towards the amount of money we will have to negotiate with. And this is the fun part. This is the fucking fun part. The last one for the year is more than likely going to be the military budget. So if you blow your fucking load on the early ones, you're going to have to jack up the, you know, you're going to have to cut military spending or budget like a normal fucking person and, and start tamping down the deficit until you get it below um, you know, where there's a budget surplus, like uh, fucking adults, and then eventually use the surplus to pay off the debt and and piece by piece, just like a, a person with a fucking mortgage trying to avoid penalties. Like, oh, good Lord. Gleeful. So, so, but, but, but listen to one of Joe Biden's flunkies or, or mouthpieces talking about what, what a great... Excuse me. Um, that's Mr. Flunky to you. Um, is he talking about me? ...they struck against... Your Congress, listen. When you go into these things, what are you doing it for? Sure, there are some days where I have to slap myself and you're like, ah, let it go. It's fine. The point is... The Tuck Pendleton machine, zero defects. Ah. To avoid default. Yeah, and then... I, I love that, like, audio delay at the tail end. It makes me feel better about my production values. And then she goes on and say, says, like, talks really negatively about, about the, the deal. Why don't you show it? When you, you've obviously got the footage. Why don't you just play what she was going to fucking say? Did your editor get fired? Did they quit? Because you're, cause you're Trumpy? Did they leave? Sorry. The deal that you guys originally came up with, almost like it was going to be a, a horrible deal for the country. Meanwhile, they got everything they wanted, didn't they? Uh, Eric, I think so, because we're seeing Democrats say, well, we were thinking about taking this to the streets um, over these spending cuts, but then we actually read the bill and it's not so bad. And now they're trans like That's right. Um, whipping votes in favor of this piece of legislation. Well, yeah, because we because everybody's realistic about it. And they're also uh, in, in large part not vindictive assholes willing to destroy the fucking country to 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 win something unwinnable because negotiations and and a balanced approach is necessary. This is a gift to the Democrats. This is a gift. To hmm, that's sweet. And it's not, you know what the great thing about it is? It's sort of like a gift card. You know what I mean? Because it's just going to raise a debt ceiling and there's no real savings. So you can spend it how you want. It's like a, you know, it's like a target, a Target gift card where you go and buy Coors Light just to fuck with them. <laughs> Biden administration. It's going to put our presidential nominee in a very bad place come election season. Why? And uh, this, it's just a huge fail. Why? Because they'll have to raise the debt ceiling when they come in and you don't expect to hold the house? On our part, all of the Biden's radical policies are still in place. They still Um, I'm fine. We'll have the IRA um, funds that... Yeah, still got the IRA funds. Clearly, I mean, I think it has to do with Biden being a, a you know, an Irish Catholic. He's going to bring over Sean fucking, the dude from Patriot Games. It's all coming together. Subsidize the Green New Deal. That's right, the IRA. We've given up on Sinn Féin, and now we're going for green fields. That's right. Orange stars and blue clo clovers. We're doing it all for the environment. Nay. <laughs> the IRA. Yeah, the IRS, obviously. Now, we have some great NEPA. I hope. <laughs> I, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to take that for granted. No. Reforms in this. She meant the IRA. She thinks we're funding the IRA. 
I'm just going to leave it at that. But if we still have those massive subsidies to the for the IRA New Deal corporations, well, the Green New Deal corporations. Yes, big sky, big water, big dirt, well, then big lightning, big mama nature. Those NEPA regulations will only be fast tracked to um, to further their radical agenda. All right, so I'm yeah, this has nothing to do with any of that shit. You can't, you're not going to, obviously she and a bunch of these Freedom Caucus assholes thought that the debt ceiling would be their opportunity to undo every piece of bipartisan past legislation that Biden got through. Because largely, I believe they're, um, what's the word? Fucking lunatics. This is just goofy. That's it. I don't even like the fact the fact that they entertain this is embarrassing. Like, I don't know how I mean, obviously, you know, we know that Trump can't feel shame, but he can feel embarrassment. And I think Bobert's pretty close to the same. How how the how do you not just go? Ugh, God, I sound like a dickhead. I just throw this this full screen up and, and Mitt Romney's on board with it. And uh yeah, it's a fucking Romney guy. And I was even the other day, I was having this guy inject Play-Doh into my cheeks and he was for it. And I was like, what's happening? Um, Mitch McConnell's on board. The Wall Street Journal did a... a yeah, it's got to pass the Senate, fucko. <laughs> you know what they're not on board with? The bill you guys passed before, along with every Democrat, period. Even Manchin and Cinema. you Heard. Editorial on board with the folks. When you have Mitt Romney, um, the Wall Street Journal, and uh, Mitch McConnell, we have a different full screen control room. Put that one up. Then you know it's not. Yeah, oh, that that puts it together. Yeah, get up that get us a, ladies and gentlemen, the Republican hate wall. Who would have spotted this in fucking 2012? Ah, oh, this is glorious. That's their hate wall. They're not playing a clip of Joe Biden going, you know, it's we didn't get everything we want. Nobody got everything we want, but we feel like it's a good deal. And there's a lot to, you know, to feel good about. And like, nope, they're putting up a picture of fucking Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, and the title of the Wall Street Journal as if it's a human. Why, why don't you just put up fucking a picture of Rupert Murdoch while you're at it? I mean, go for it, Newsmax. You wuss. You, I mean, you're... You, you, if you're going to swing for Fox, you can't miss. Good deal for conservatives. Final thought, uh, Congresswoman. Right. Well, I, I would like to argue that she may not have had a thought so far. These are just words that are kind of bouncing around and falling out of her face. Um, yes, I just wish that Republicans would govern as they campaigned. If so, we would not um, see. I wish they would govern as they campaigned. So uh, MTG could be shooting uh, hybrid cars from a clock tower off of uh, Washington, D.C. Several of our Freedom Caucus individuals would be uh, screaming at gay people and uh, yelling invictives and, and racial pejoratives at strangers. And, uh, and yeah, I'd, it, it would be nice if they governed that same way. As a matter of fact, by the way, uh, for the record, they are. None of them govern by actually presenting bills. None of them actually ran on materially solving these things. Mike Lee ran on strengthening Social Security in front of the camera and then at these private gatherings of donors telling them he's, he's going to destroy it, along Medicare and Medicaid as well. So they, they campaign as liars and they govern as liars. There's a difference between saying what your goals and your policies will be and going for those things and then recognizing the limitations once you get in there and honestly addressing them and dealing with them and then continuing to push for the stuff that you want like any fucking human being. And then there's another thing to make up like these cartoonish ideas of what you'll be able to accomplish and then make it everybody else's fucking fault when you can't because it is not possible. And if it were, we wouldn't be America. Many members um, praising this piece of legislation, but I do want to give credit where credit is due. We've had...
Thanks very much. I, I, yes, not only does my hair look fantastic today, but I feel like my uh, commentary's been on point. And even though I had a hard time talking in the Trump clip because I was laughing so hard, I feel like I still got several good jokes and points in. Um, you know, and and ultimately, I think the the idea that this might be a recurring theme will present us with some joy going forward. And, uh, I'm sorry. What? Oh, you're not. You weren't talking. Okay, I'm sorry. Cre who else? Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, no, Chip Roy. The members um, that are typically uh, Team McCarthy, um, uh, colleagues of mine who have come out against this legislation, and I, I encourage them to continue to hold the line. Um, we He's giving a couple of them permission to, to be assholes about it, probably including her in this meeting. Like, you guys can go tear me to shit. Just don't vote me out. You can, you, know, you can say you're the outsider and you'll keep me true to this and you're why. I'll tell everybody you're why I got this one little thing in there. I talked to Biden. He gave me this little scrap that'll, it's fucking meaningless, but it'll make it look good to your constituents that we put in this work requirement for people 50 to 55 years old. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. You can go. And w I got that for you. If it wasn't for me, that wouldn't even been in there. And then you can try and run on that shit because it's not like you have any constructive seen, ideas. Uh, members like yep. Nancy Mace and Corey Mills and Kat Kamak and Diana Harshberg. Kat Kamak. Uh, and uh, the QAnon caucus from Florida uh, and Wesley Hunt come out against this legislation. And I hope that they yep. still remain in that position. Nope. No, they're a couple of them, most of them will, but a couple of them are going to come around after feeling like, well, I took a look at it and it's very important. We're obviously up against the wall and we're going to need your votes next time because we need more Republicans in here to vote. You know, if we, if we had a stronger mandate, we'd be able to push this through and the Senate would take us seriously. But right now it's, it's, you know, they, we lost the Senate fair and square and they've, they've got more votes and stuff and they, they're looking to pick some up next time if we're not careful. So this is the best we can do and we might lose even more seats next time if we're, uh, considering the way, uh, the rest of our party is shitting all over Mitch McConnell. Um, at some point, we might even lose the Kentucky. Um, so, uh, yeah. Even after uh, they are trying to be strong-armed, both in the GOP conference that's taking place right now and on the House floor during... It, it's strong-armed. They're being hand-jobbed. That's what all that Trump stuff's about. That's why he does that, you know, all the time. He's basically saying, like, give that guy something so he votes my way. Give that guy something so he votes my way. It's tomorrow. Got, got to leave it there, Congresswoman. You know, it, at some point, if, if McCarthy keeps doing this, you can vacate that speakership and vote for it. it only takes one. Lauren Boebert, appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. And that little, he didn't give her time to answer it. But it, clearly, she's like, that's my, that's my shit. Uh, uh, that's my shit. That's my shit. Watch her. And vote for end. it. Only takes one. Lauren Boebert, appreciate your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff.